Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for a new cheesecake shop that's packed with sweet desserts. Yes, we're going to eat some cheesecake. Plus, we're going inside a new ramen shop on the east side of downtown San Antonio. Well, today we're going to do a ramen, 13 pound ramen challenge. It's very YOLO. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, very YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> and we check out a resort in Round Rock, Texas, offering killer steaks. Wow. I mean, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some more foot on that. That's All a double right. footer. There you go. One, two. There you go. Our first stop on today's foodie adventure is a dessert shop near the University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio, Texas. If you're looking for some delicious desserts, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert time, there's one place you have to come to in San Antonio that just opened up, Laika Cheesecake and Espresso. Let's go inside and see what they got on the menu. Joining us now is Anna. We're inside of the kitchen. She's the executive chef and the co-owner out here at Laika. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the kitchen right now. The kitchen is actually pretty tiny, as you can <laughs> probably see yourself. But we put a lot of shelves on the walls. So yeah, you're and making a lot with a little bit of space. Yeah, we're trying to keep, keep up with that. Here we have Anastasia. She's making the uh, crumble topping for our peach crisp cake. Yeah. This looks incredible just right now. I'll just give me a spoon and I'd eat that. Like um, <laughs> yeah, I doubt you want to eat no. the roll. Flour, but <laughs> and it's not just this happening in here. Like you said, it is a little bit small in here, but you guys got a lot going on. So oh, what yeah. else is happening? Okay, so this is Ina. She's working on our homemade salted caramel right now. Never stir the sugar because it will start crystallizing. Oh. And so once it hits like um, 180, 190 degrees Celsius, uh, we take it out of the stove. We pour our cream very carefully because it starts splashing a lot. And with a wooden spatula, we start mixing it together, and then we add the butter and we return it to the stove. All right, and the third station you have in the kitchen right here, looks like, oh my goodness, uh, it looks like some really cool fruit you have. What's going on? So this is Dylan, our kitchen manager, and he's right now making the topping for mango passion fruit cheesecake. And as you can see, we use a fresh fruit to make the topping. I've as never you... seen the inside of that fruit. That yeah. is a strange inside. That looks like a little alien fruit. <laughs> I know. But... It's so good though. <laughs> it's honestly amazing. It's very tart. So I'm super excited. We got to see how a little bit of the elements are made for these cheesecakes. But now the most important part, we get to go eat them, which I'm super excited about. Now we're out here in the lobby. This is what you're gonna see when you walk into the store. And we have all these different cheesecakes right here. And Anna, you're gonna walk me through. I mean, you have a lot of different options, right? Yeah. So okay. what do you have right here? So we got a variety of different cheesecakes. Some of them in a jar, some of them in the form of a slices. So the first one here is a mango passion fruit. Which we just saw being made. <laughs> yeah, you just saw me making it with all this fresh fruit that Dylan was cutting. So it got the graham crust, the mango cheesecake, and the passion fruit mango gel on the top. This one's so fun looking, and uh -huh. it's also one of your biggest sellers as well, right? Yeah, honestly, like the minute we usually put it on a display, it's gone within minutes, because people just come here specifically for this slice. It's called Picnic in Space, and it's got a Graham Crumb base, got a, a blueberry jam, our signature vanilla cheesecake, and it's topped with lemon curd, fresh blueberries, and a toasted meringue. Joining us now to talk a little bit more about the history of the bake shop out here is Victor Charisma, and you're gonna be talking to us about the name of the cheesecake spot, which is Laika. Yeah. So who's Laika, and why name the shop after? So Laika was the first uh, creature from Earth uh, to orbit the Earth in a space. Uh, it was a dog from Moscow. Uh, before we send human to space, uh, we had to send animals first yeah. to, to see how, how it affects. Unfortunately, the human that's just how it goes. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, but <laughs> it is a piece of uh, history of, of Eastern Europe, and that's where we're from. So we wanted to incorporate a little bit of it into our store too. Uh, for people who need an option like a sugar-free or low sugar, do you have an option for them? We actually, you're right in time because we just uh, wanted to announce it today that we started 
making the sugar-free and gluten-free desserts too. Wow. So right now on the display you can see the sugar-free New York with the raspberry topping, with the raspberry sugar-free jam on top. Thank you so much for showing us, but now, I mean, it is finally time. We've seen them all. It's time to eat. Yay. And I'm super, yes, we're gonna eat some cheesecake. <laughs> Now we're outside. Of course, when you order your cheesecakes, you can sit outside. Why not? There's a little patio out here. We have the two different slices that are available right now, plus four different flavors, including the sugar-free option, which I'm really excited about. This is the one that's really popular, so I'm gonna take a little bite out of this. I want a little bit of that meringue action going on. That's money right there. Mm. It's so good. It's so creamy and it's rich, but the crust has such a nice foundation to it. It's so structurally sound. You can actually pick that up and it's gonna to hold together. But then it's nice and creamy. You have that little fruit layer on the bottom. This is like the ultimate slice of cheesecake. You have all the little notes that you want. And it's a little bit tart, it's a little sweet, and it's a really nice balance of all the flavors. I'm gonna jump over here. This is the sugar-free. I wanna see what the exact difference is, okay? Sure. All right. It's also <laughs> gluten-free too. It's gluten and sugar-free. Yes. All right, I'm ready. Let's try it out. No way. <laughs> no way. So this is sugar free. It is, absolutely. <laughs> There's just maybe what? a tiny bit of a natural sugar from the raspberry. Right. But other than that, no sugar added. No sugar at all. Wow. Uh, keep doing your thing. Give me some ducks. Keep doing it. Um, I'm going to keep enjoying all this. You guys like us right here off of Broadway, right near UIW and Central Market. This is the spot to come to, and I can imagine during different holidays, Valentine's Day is coming up, uh, they're gonna have different things on the menu, so make sure you follow them on social media as well to see what they're doing. And um, if you guys start doing delivery, uh, I'm sure that you could also get information about that as well on social media. But cheers to you guys, you're killing it. Keep Thank doing it. Much. I'm gonna eat all these cheesecakes, and it's, it's only lunchtime. <laughs> Now, we're going inside of a popular noodle shop near the University of Texas, San Antonio. Now we're here on the northwest side of San Antonio to go inside of a noodle shop that's got some wacky stuff on the menu. Let's go inside Doodle Tree. The COVID-19 outbreak hit Noodle Tree twice as hard this past summer. Due to hospital overcrowding, owner and chef Mike Gwen relocated to Dallas to continue his cancer treatments. He was forced to shut Noodle Tree's doors for five months during this time. Community support has kept his business afloat, and he has recently been able to return to San Antonio and reopen on a limited basis while he continues his cancer treatments in Dallas. Joining me now is Mike Gwen. He's the owner and chef out here at Noodle Tree. I'm super excited because you have fusion food on the menu. Everything looks very, uh, it looks fun. It looks really interesting, but I'm super excited about this dish right here. That's the birria bao. You know, me being born and raised in California, um, it was really popular then, and then the, it kind of migrated to San Antonio this year and it exploded. So my thing, my take was, you know, I could add a little bit of San Antonio flair to the restaurant. The buns, when traditionally you, you know, they're fluffy and nice, but I was like, let me see if we can actually make it into a beer. And it actually makes a perfect vessel <laughs> with it. And, you know, it actually absorbs a lot of the broth itself because of the bun. This is the Bidia Bao bun the little consomme on the side, and the uh, the devil's hot sauce. <laughs> and just donk it, like just don't, don't be the afraid. Hole. There you go. <laughs> That's what you want to do right there. That's the bite. Wow. If you love Bedia, you've got to try these Bedia bao buns. It's the perfect little combination of sweet, salty, crunchy. It has all these fun textures in there, but the Bedia on the inside really does it justice. And then the cheese in there as well, I mean, you dunk it in the consomme and it's just a really good bite. It's got a lot of gooey elements to it from that cheese that you're using in there. Um, the crust that you have formed on the outside of this is so good. That little bit of crunch with the gooey in there, it's a really nice play on textures. With the flavor, it's savory. That hot sauce is no joke. All you need, just a little dab will do you. But it really helps uh, like just kind of create that over, overall like well-rounded bite. It's the spice, it's a little bit sweet, it's salty. This is just every little bit you want. It's the umami. It hits all the little flavor profiles. That's incredible. And they're so small, you're gonna eat like a dozen of them. These are not traditional ramen bowls. And this one has, was it manudo? That's, that's, that's the manudo ramen. 
You know, when I eat menudo, I love menudo, but there's always one problem I always have, and I always run out of tortillas. One day I was just like, what if I add noodles to this? And then it just, everything, all the gears started grinding. It's it's like, it is. So we have your traditional uh, six minute egg, ramen egg. We have the noodles, the scallions, but then we added the hominy to it, and then the tripe. And on top of that, we added the cilantro scallions and then the lime itself. But the broth is 100% menudo. I want to get a little bit of everything. Got the hominy off to the side. Kind of mix all this in there. Oh man, that's the noodle pool. Look at that. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Here we go, try that right here. The menudo ramen is a fun blend of two cultures, and it has the, all the essence that you want from menudo, and then it has all the ramen noodles, the little green onions in there that you're gonna get from the Asian culture, and it just works. It's really interesting how this actually all comes together, and it just makes sense. Wow, I would say on this one, you really nailed true menudo, the red menudo that you want. And like you're saying, you're making it from the peppers, you're not using a powder or anything like yeah. that. And it's fun, because everything plays so well together, and then you, you still have some of those elements of traditional ramen in there. And isn't it crazy, these two cultures, you put them together like this, and it just works. And it works, yep. So this is our take on a uh, tonkatsu. We call it the Hakata ramen. It has your pickle bed mushrooms, your six minute egg, and then we use pulled pork. The pork shoulder is the perfect way to do it. It's not dry, it's juicy, and it absorbs a lot of the flavor that we want, which is almost like a sweet and savory flavor. One of my favorite styles of ramen, this is really cool that you have it out here. So I'm gonna give it a bite. Got that little bit of pulled pork you said right here off to the side. Oh wow, dude, that's the jam right there. I would, I would chug this whole thing if it wasn't just gonna be disgusting on TV. Like I would, <laughs> I would just chug it. Drink it like uh, on Dragon Ball Z, right? Yeah, there, yeah, there. Yeah, you always Naruto. see Goku just like slopping it in. Just like that picture back there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, exactly. See, that's my man right there. Chef Gwen's take on the tonkatsu ramen out here at Noodle Tree is really fun. It's absolutely delicious. And I actually had to stop myself from finishing the whole bowl right there on camera. I could have done it. It's a really good bite. And if you want to get more traditional ramen when you're out here at Noodle Tree, that's the one to get. The prevalence of, of sweetness hits you off the top from that pulled pork but then you're balancing everything else that's in the dish. And like you said, it's very light, it's a very thin broth, but the development in here, again, you know how to build flavors and you're doing it really well. And it's the textures that you have in there as well. When you're at Noodle Tree and you got a sweet tooth, don't worry, they got you covered. Dominique Perez with Tough Love Cookies and Treats is offering different treats on the menu only available at Noodle Tree. You can get different kinds of cookies, some of them shaped like your favorite characters, and you can also get donut ice cream sandwiches. And let me tell you, these things are delicious. The sweets on the menu are these little Hello Kitty cookies that come out here with the milk. So it's kind of fun, right? It makes you want to lap it up like a little cat. Then you have the ones that have a little bit larger cookie, icing on the outside, ice cream in the middle. You can't go wrong. Ice cream sandwiches are just really good. Well, Mike, thank you so much. It's really, really good stuff. Um, we are open on a limited basis, four days of the week. That's because the three days that we're not open, I'm in Dallas getting treatment. So I drive to Dallas every week and drive back to get ready for this. It's a little strenuous at times, but you know, at the end of the day, it's worth it. When, when we see the customers back, we're able to open the dining room, and you know, people come to me like, I miss this so much. Like, I'm so glad that you're open. And that's what makes it worth it at the end of the day, is all your hard work is getting paid off. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we go inside a resort in Round Rock, Texas, offering killer steaks. Wow. I mean, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some more foot on that. That's All a double right. footer. There you go. One, two, there you go. And next, we go inside a new ramen shop on the east side of San Antonio and meet food competitor Reina. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the east side of downtown San Antonio at a new ramen shop to meet Reina. Reina, or Reina is crazy on social media, is a food competitor known across social media for her viral videos displaying her food eating abilities. Today I am here at Suck It Kitchen to take on their ramen challenge. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> Has there been a food challenge that you've come across that you haven't been able to achieve? There's, there's been a few. So I actually have on my website, I list out all my wins and I list out all my losses. I have about 30 something losses, but I believe this one I'm going for my overall win number 427. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Did she reach out to you or did you reach out to her? Uh, she actually reached out to us, like, hey, you know, like, that's a cool name you guys have. Like, what are you guys offering there? And we like, we have sushi, ramen, little pho, bubble tea. And she's like, well, what, what about some kind of food challenge? And like, you know what, for you, we'll make one up for you. <laughs> Although the noodle shop didn't have a food challenge before, they definitely have one now, a 13 pound ramen challenge. This thing is loaded with all the essential ramen favorites and it's got a lot of it in there. So what goes into making the ramen? What's everything that you're putting in there? Okay, so it start, with, start off with the, the pork broth. In there we have uh, pork bones. We boil that for about 36 hours. At the 36 hour uh, time frame, we add chicken feet to it and chicken carcass, and then boil it for another 12 hours to make it 48 hours total. Get all that collagen, all that richness out of the, all the bones. And then of course we got the noodles, the pork belly, and then all these uh, side fixings to go with. Is this intimidating to you at all? Have you, have you done something similar to this or on this level? I definitely done something similar, but just looking at the amount of meat that they have here today, it is kind of intimidating. That is a lot of food and a lot of noodles. Like, little, little under 13 pounds, right? Little under 13 pounds. Wow. Okay, it's still under 13 pounds. That is... I think she might be okay with that. The ramen bowl is slightly under 13 pounds, but still, come on. It's almost 13 pounds of ramen. That's still a huge feat. And the time frame to finish all this food? 30 minutes. Let's see if Raina can do it. We got a really good crowd here today, so I want you guys to give a countdown, and we will get started from 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, six 5, That was incredible. Thank you. It was really cool. What is a normal after food competition like kind of mentality that you have? Uh, I definitely just thinking about like chilling. Yeah, I, I definitely take it very easy after a food challenge and then um, <clears throat> uh, no, just, just relax, honestly. Yeah, don't want to go do anything too crazy after this. <laughs> Suck It Kitchen and Bar is now open on the east side of downtown San Antonio. And if you want to get more information about Reina, just follow her on social media, at Reina is crazy. You don't have to eat the big bowl of ramen when you visit the shop, but you can get great drinks, great customer service, and delicious food. And next, here on Texas Eats, we go inside a resort in Round Rock, Texas, offering killer steaks. Wow. I mean, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some more foot on that. That's All a double right. footer. There you go. One, two, there you go. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
When you're here at the Kalahari Resort and you want to have a really nice meal, you have to come out to Double Cut Steakhouse. This is where they have the prime cuts of steak, plus pork and poultry on the menu. Let's go into the kitchen and see what they got cooking up. Joining us again here is Chad Blunson, Executive Director of Culinary here at the Kalahari Resort. And right here you have a whole cutting board of the best of the best cuts of meat that you could possibly find anywhere. I mean, this one right here off the top, that's a dry aged cut right there. That Talk is, to me about that. That is a 20 ounce bone in dry age, aged 30 days. We're, uh, we're proud to serve uh, certified Angus beef here from ranches in Texas. And we, this is just some of our steak lineup that we have here. We've got different size beef tenderloin is our, is our most popular cut. Here's a nice eight ounce steak there. We've got a 12. Do you want a 12? You, you can share it if you want, but it's all yours if you want it as that's well. The, that's the big one though. That's what you want. <laughs> that, that's right, that's right. If somebody was to ask, what's your favorite one? Which one would you go for? Well, it's gotta be my tomahawk. <laughs> oh, see, you're hiding the good <laughs> stuff. Look at you, you got the big boy right there. This can serve two to three people. So here at Double Cut, we got what we call a meat and three. So Southern tradition that you know all about meat and three. This is our version of it. We're going to get a top quality steak, incredible ingredients, and it comes with three house-made sides. This is our tomahawk that uh, we were cooking a little earlier in the kitchen. So 48 ounce prime CAB on there. We cook it right there on the bone to make it an easier, uh, enjoyable eating experience. We let it rest, we take it off the bone for you, and we serve it with your choice of three sides. So we've got our fresh corn there, cream corn, can't go wrong with that at a steakhouse. Mushrooms, you gotta have steak and mushrooms, right? Oh, yeah. we, we do ours a little bit differently with glaze with a little bit of bourbon and fresh herbs, charred broccoli, toasted pine nuts, Parmesan cheese. This is a steakhouse that you don't have to come to the resort to enjoy. You can just come here and just go into the steakhouse, right? Absolutely, absolutely. A any of our restaurants you're able to enjoy as, as a local guest or, or as a guest that's here. But like you mentioned, you don't have to stay here. So the local community, we love it. We're, we know uh, the great people of Round Rock will really embrace this, this restaurant as well as our others. It's got its own entrance. We have this beautiful patio out front which opens up onto our Amatuli. It's kind of our gathering place where you'll see people enjoying live music at night, featuring crafts, uh, local artisans, as well as artisans that uh, will be here from, from Africa. I love that it's an educational experience as well as an engaging experience for everyone that come out to Kalahari. I mean, because you can come out here, you have fun, you get great food, but you can also learn something about African culture when you're out here as well. Absolutely. Thank you. If you're looking to be wild, you want to come out, you want to have the romantic evening you probably haven't had in a while so the kids can go out and have fun and maybe you and the missus can go and enjoy yourself. You get a glass of wine, you get that tomahawk steak, you get the sides, this is the way to do it. Cheers. Cheers.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're traveling to Green, Texas, known for Green Hall, the Guadalupe River, and a pizza joint with some attitude. Let's go inside Inferno's wood-fired oven and spirits. This pizza spot is serving up some spicy creations, including their flagship item, the Inferno Pizza. Hand-tossed pizza dough gets stretched and covered with house-made sauce, mozzarella cheese, scorpion pepper-infused sausage, and tomatoes. The pizza gets slid into the wood fire oven set at around 715 degrees and cooks for about five to seven minutes. The pizza gets topped with fresh basil and shaved Parmesan cheese. This right here is the Inferno pizza. Now this has, get this, house-made scorpion pepper sausage. That sounds wild, right? Now I have two slices right here, but check this out. I'm gonna fold it over, and now you got like a little pizza sandwich. There you go. You can take that hack with you if you'd like. Really nice little spice to it, but overall, it's the flavor profile. The sausage has a really good texture. It's nice and gooey. The fresh basil that's added on top, though, is very key. It's really herbaceous. And then you have that nice shaved Parmesan, right? So it's like nice and flaky. But overall, that's killer. If you like spice, this is the pizza to get. This is the one you want to come up to. When you come out to Green, you come out to Inferno's and you get this pizza, change your life. It's really good. You got to be a spice lover. It's got a really good bite to it. Owner Carrie Hamer opened the restaurant after working decades in the food and hospitality industry. So Inferno's Pizza is a, is a concept that we started about seven years ago. And if you look at the name, it's actually Inferno's Wood-Fired Oven and Spirits, because we're not just a pizza concept. We offer other, other varieties of food, appetizers, sandwiches. Also on the menu, traditional pizzas like the margarita pizza, a massive wedge salad. I hardly ever put salads on my show. But this is definitely one salad I can be proud of putting on here. This is not a healthy salad, y'all. I'm gonna be straight up with you. But it is so delicious. It's so tasty. It has a great texture on there. And yeah, you're eating some lettuce in the process, but the big old bacon chunks, the gorgonzola cheese, and that balsamic reduction on there, shut your mouth. That's just delicious. A meatball appetizer and a Reuben sandwich. I absolutely love the Reuben sandwich. It's awesome. If you're feeling like something a little bit lighter, right, you don't want to get the whole pizza lunch combo, you want to get something that you could probably take on the go or eat the whole thing while you're sitting down, the Reuben sandwich looks like a really good sized sandwich, but it's enough to enjoy right at the table. Now check that out. House-made Russian dressing, marbled rye, get this, bacon-infused sauerkraut. I'm all about that. The three B's of Southern cooking, bacon, biscuits, and butter, baby. So you gotta put that into something. So here we go, I'm gonna take a bite. Whoa, that's really good. That's awesome. It is awesome. It's a straightforward Reuben sandwich. It's a, not a fussy sandwich, and I think that's a big thing about this restaurant. When you order something, it's a gourmet item, but it's not fussy, okay? It has a really nice toast and crunch on the outside. The bacon flavor is prevalent. You can, tell, you can taste it's there, but then you have a really nice pastrami on the inside. That Russian dressing is killer, and it's not making it soggy or anything. The bread really holds up nicely to it. Pickles, chips on the side, but you can also get some of the potato salad when you come out. It's a great option. And to think that a pizza place is making a really cool Reuben sandwich out here in green, why not? You gotta come try it. The bar is serving up some wild drinks as well. Something you'll need after finishing the Inferno pizza. Look at this drink. They were kind enough to call this the Texas Eats Bomb Pop Margarita, all right? <laughs> it's got a Bomb Pop Popsicle inside of it. And look at that, that thing's just dripping. It's covered in it. It's got margarita as the base. And then it's got this little, look at that. Oh, it's got vodka in it as well. That's good. Okay, hold on. You gotta try the bomb pop with it. Oh, it's messy. The green location offers lots of outdoor seating and occasional entertainment from live bands. And on the other side of San Antonio, in Bernie, Texas, there's another Inferno's location. Something else that you can get when you come out to the Bernie location, chicken wings. Come on, beer, pizza, chicken wings, your favorite sports team, it all works out. Now, they're making it all fresh here to order. So when you get it, they're gonna toss it right there. These ones, 
are the scorpion pepper oil chicken wings. If you're brave enough to try them. <laughs> Both locations of Inferno's wood fire oven and spirits rock. And when you're there, you gotta try their Big Mac pizza. This is by far my favorite pizza at any Hill Country pizza spot. You guys gotta come out to Inferno's. There's one here in green. There's also one in Bernie. When you come out here, try the scorpion pizza if you like spicy things. Put some oil on it. Ask them for the oil if you wanna get real crazy. That's like next level spicy. The Reuben sandwich, the mac and cheese pulled pork sandwich as well, the wedge salad, that's really a half a salad, right? Everything on here is a home run. You guys will really enjoy it. It's a family friendly environment that everybody can come out to and they have a killer bar scene. So if you come out for brunch, you know you're gonna get hooked up with a great drink. Later on Texas Eats, we go inside a veteran owned Tex-Mex barbecue joint in the hill country and next, we go inside a sushi restaurant with Latin flair. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. When it comes to fresh Japanese food, there's one place in San Antonio that's got it in the name. Let's go inside Unico Japanese House. Joining us now is Andres Castro. He is the executive chef and owner out here at Unico. But before we eat, and you got something on fire over here, you got a fish looking at us, and you have this gorgeous presentation. What does the name of the restaurant mean, Unico? Uni is a uh, sea urchin. Ko uh, means in Japanese the freshers of the air. Now, does it mean something else in any other language? Or? If you say it in Spanish, unico, so it means unique. Because we still have our Mexican touch. Because Texas or San Antonio. Right. So it's like Latin infused Japanese food. Is that uh, like inspired food, right? Correct. I see different rolls. I see some different presentations. I mean, you guys do a lot of wild stuff out here. Correct. Right? This roll looks amazing. Talk to me about this one right here. It's got a little like pepper on top, got some sauce on there. I'm going to eat it, but talk to me about it. What's going on? Yeah. That's their select roll. They have um, gelatin, salmon, Inside, have a fried shrimp. It's <laughs> good, yeah, you can taste um, it. Avocado and kanikama. There are a ton of different rolls on the menu, and every time you come out here, the presentation is gonna change. So it makes it fun and interesting. Yeah, this one was on fire, which um, it was a really cool display. I love that. 
Uh, talk to me what makes this one special. What's inside of it? That's uh, our, our number one roll. Okay. It's uh, two kings because it have a king salmon and the king scallops. Scallops? A scallop on top. Mm -hmm. So is it kind of like a, like the scallops are in a sauce? Is it, is it baked they're, at all? Or? They're baked, uh-huh. They're kind of baked, roasted, and tortured with masago on top. All right, gotta try it. Mm. Oh, wow. That's fun. You like it? That's different, too. The signature dish out here involves setting the plate on fire. It's a great presentation, and the scallops wrapped inside of the king salmon, absolutely delicious. I love that everything has its own unique profile. And you, you, you add you, you on say the, what? You, you, everything has its own unique. Yeah. There we go. Unique. I'm out unique. Here. All right, I'm gone. <laughs> I love what you're doing out here. I love the concept and your, your goal out here to provide such fresh fish for San Antonio. You can tell just by looking at the presentation when you walk in, it's gorgeous in here. And then the fish, the quality of the fish, it just melts in your mouth and there's no fish scent to it or fish flavor. It all has its own little unique, creamy, good flavors. You guys, Unico is where it's at. Over here by La Quintera, come stop by. They got a great to go menu as well. Yes. You can come mm -hmm. pick it up and um, if you're gonna come dine in. It's a cool spot and great people out here serving as well. Thank you so much Andres for, for having welcome. me out here. Thank you. Love. There you go, I'm gonna keep eating. You can eat like 20 pieces of sushi, I think, right? What is it, like 30? Easy. I'm mm -hmm. a big guy. I can eat like 30. Easy. We have customers, they eat uh, 75. <laughs>And next on the show, we go inside a veteran-owned Tex-Mex barbecue joint in the hill country. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Padre's Hill Country Cocina is a Texas cafe slinging out Tex-Mex food like you've never seen before. Torta beef. They've got all kinds of delicious items on the menu, including a torta with your choice of protein and their specialty dish, the whole enchilada. A large flour tortilla gets loaded with fresh guac, rice, beans, and your choice of protein and gets rolled like a burrito. Then it gets topped with house-made queso, shredded cheese, 
jalapeno cumin sour cream, pico de gallo, and cilantro. This right here is called the whole enchilada. It's a flour tortilla, right? And they're wrapping it up inside with guacamole, rice, your choice of protein. On this one, I went with the smoked shredded pork. Wow. This is extremely decadent. It, the, the queso on there is really savory, but it's also, it's very thick and it has a nice flavor to it. It's almost buttery, and then the tortilla is nice and soft. When you couple that with the flavor from the pork, the pico de gallo, a little bit of the rice, and that really creamy guacamole that they have on the inside as well, it's almost just like an avocado paste. This is incredible. The acidity from the tomatoes and the pico de gallo cut through everything, so you're gonna get a really nice, well-rounded bite. This is killer, and you know, it's heavy, y'all. That is heavy. <laughs> also on the menu, Tender smoked beef fajitas, smoked chicken, and juicy smoked pulled pork. All of the barbecue is smoked every morning. What we're known for is our smoked beef fajitas. So as you can see, they got the nice ring on them. And then the longer it sits here, it just starts falling apart. People swear we're making them, we're giving them brisket. The beef fajitas are tender and packed with flavor. I recommend getting the tacos with cilantro and the house-made salsa. These right here are the tacos that you can get when you come out to Compadres. This right here is the beef smoked fajita taco and the smoked chicken taco. Check that out. And they're loaded up with cilantro on top, flour tortillas, and then you have some salsa on the side. All this is made in house. I mean, this guy's legit. The smoke smell is amazing. So that's the bite. That's a solid beef fajita taco. That's absolutely delicious. The fajita meat is super tender, and the smoke flavor is really nice, and it's not overpowering. And it's complemented by the cilantro, the little bit of salsa that's in there. You can see it has like a smoke ring on it. So it's not too often you get to see fajitas with like a little smoke ring on there. But then it's also seared quickly, so it has a nice texture on the outside. I mean, it's killer. The tortillas are nice and soft as well. All in all, this is something that is unique, especially to the Bernie area, but you won't really find anything like this. There's a lot of Tex-Mex barbecue fusion joints, but nobody doing fajita tacos like this. Another fan favorite at the restaurant is the enchilada mac and cheese. It's kind of like, it's like gourmet mac and cheese, right to the next level. Y'all, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Woo, it's incredible. What a fun texture and what a great idea. It is so good. This is like the wacky idea that you would see like at the cafeteria at school, except this is executed like on a gourmet level, right? The owner, Chef Mark Sieta, learned how to cook traditional Tex-Mex food at a young age from his grandmother, who was blind. I started cooking uh, at a very young age, 10 years old. My, I was raised by my grandparents. So when they took me in, I was 10 months old. My grandmother was already 71. By the time I was 10, she had diabetes and she went blind. So. Uh, at that time, you know, we had a home hospice lady that would come and, and, and feed her, right? And so when it was time for me to eat, uh, you know, the lady, the hospice lady, the cook, she's like, well, they don't, pay, they don't pay me to feed you, they pay me to feed your grandmother. So when my grandmother heard that, my grandmother was like, you know what? She ran her off and said, you know what? I'm gonna teach you how to cook where you don't have to depend on anyone else. After possibly playing baseball for the Texas Rangers, Mark joined the military at 27. I was 27 years old when I enlisted. Uh, there was guys that were 19, 20, you know, and there were sergeants and they're telling me what to do. You know, so it was a very humbling experience. The military taught me how to, how to work as a team, you know, so I incorporate that in everything I do. If you're looking for something sweet to wrap up your meal, you gotta try the custom cakes made by the Little Cake Haas in Bernie, Texas. And they're only available at Compadres. You guys gotta come out here, Compadres, Hill Country Cocina, this up here in Bernie, Texas. Come on up here, get a really delicious taco, one of their beef fajita tacos. You can try the whole enchilada, the enchilada mac and cheese, and then the cakes. They have a cinnamon roll cake, the chocolate cake, whatever they got up there, it's gonna be delicious, y'all.